Richard Travis Whitcomb February 21, 1921, to October 13, 2009, was an American aeronautical engineer who was noted for his contributions to the science of aerodynamics. Biography <inaudible> 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 Whitcomb was born in Evanston, Illinois. His father, who had been a balloon pilot in World War I, was a mechanical engineer who specialized in rotational dynamics. In 1932 the family moved to Worcester, Massachusetts when his father became employed at the Norton Company. As a child Whitcomb was fascinated by airplanes, he built models and flew them in competitions, always striving to improve their performance. He graduated from Worcester Polytechnic Institute in 1943 with a B.S. in Aeronautical Engineering. He was employed at the Langley Research Center operated by the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics and its successor, NASA. Career Area rule After World War II, NACA research began to focus on near-sonic and low-supersonic airflow. After considering the sudden drag increase which a wing fuselage combination experiences at somewhere around 500 miles per hour 800 km per hour, Wickham concluded that, "...the disturbances and shock waves are simply a function of the longitudinal variation of the cross-sectional area." That is, the effect of the wings could be visualized as equivalent to a fuselage with a sort of midriff bulge whose frontal area was the same as that of the wings. Since the wings could not be dispensed with in the actual case, the alternate to removing the bulge would be to decrease the fuselage's cross-section near the wings. This became known as the area rule, which allowed a significant reduction in the drag felt by airplanes near the speed of sound. Its impact on aircraft design was immediate. The prototype Convair YF-102, for example, was found not to be capable of exceeding the speed of sound in level flight. This was rectified by re-sculpting the fuselage. For his insight, Whitcomb won the Collier Trophy in 1954. In 1958, Whitcomb was named head of Langley's Transonic Aerodynamics branch, and he began working on a possible SST design. He built proposed models, but by 1962 he abandoned the project because of the intractable drag problem. Casting about for other research, he returned to the question of transonic drag, especially on wings. <laughs> <laughs> Supercritical airfoil To achieve reduced drag in the transonic phase, Whitcomb realized that the wing's pressure distribution must be modified to delay and weaken the shock wave created on the upper surface where the high-velocity flow decelerated to subsonic. Using intuition rather than mathematics, he built a 2-foot cord wing section and tested it repeatedly in the Langley high-speed wind tunnel, adding with auto body putty or removing with a file and sandpaper material until the desired flows were achieved. Although a low drag airfoil in the transonic range was thus produced, Whitcomb's superiors observed that not every aircraft manufacturer could be expected to use file and sandpaper to design the needed shapes. Therefore, NASA signed a contract with the current institute at New York University, whose mathematician Paul Garabadian and aerodynamicist Anthony Jameson worked with Whitcomb to develop a practical computational method for designing supercritical airfoils, those that were most efficient in the transonic range. Using this method, supercritical wings were fabricated and proven on full scale aircraft. In 1971, a Vought F 8 Crusader, and in 1973, a General Dynamics F 111 Aardvark, were flown at the NASA Flight Research Center in California. For his contribution, NASA awarded Whitcomb a $25,000 prize, and he received the 1974 Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy from the National Aeronautic Association. The unusual airfoil unexpectedly aided general aviation as well, its rather blunt leading edge allowed it to generate high lift coefficients before stalling, and Whitcomb published a low-speed airfoil which he called GA W-1, it is now routinely used in light aircraft and gliders. Following his research on wings, Whitcomb again turned to a possible complete supercritical aircraft, and in 1971 he published preliminary details of a near-sonic transport NST, which he predicted could attain a relatively efficient cruise at 0.98 Mach. 
as with his supercritical wing efforts, he had largely developed the design in the wind tunnel, shaping his proposed model with putty and knife until the various secondary shocks created by wing body intersections were muted as much as possible. Whitcomb's NST proposal was not advanced beyond his concept stage. Topic winglets Aerodynamicists had known for decades that some sort of wingtip barrier could reduce wingtip vortices, and thus the drag. However, Whitcomb was apparently the first to conclude that such a barrier would be most efficient if it took the form of a supplementary vertical or near vertical wing. He proposed his results, showing improvements on the order of 5%, but industry was slow to adopt. It took nearly three decades for his proposals to become commonplace, they now are routinely used on aircraft from airliners to gliders. Topic later life Following his groundbreaking research on transonic airflow, Whitcomb spent several years moving in an entirely different field, the possible extraction of usable energy from the environment by employing possible avenues of quantum physics. However, these investigations bore no result, and in 1980 he suddenly announced his decision to retire from Langley. Whitcomb continued to serve as a consultant to the aviation industry when asked. He continued to live in an apartment building in Hampton, Virginia, his residence since 1943. He had never married, but for 25 years was close to a NASA mathematician, Barbara Derling. She died in 2001. Whitcomb died in Newport News, Virginia in 2009. Topic awards and honors Collier Trophy of the National Aeronautic Association 1954 USAF Exceptional Service Medal 1955 NASA Distinguished Service Medal 1956 ASA Exceptional Scientific Service Medal 1959 National Medal of Science in Engineering 1973 Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy of the National Aeronautic Association 1974 Member National Academy of Engineering 1976 Howard N Potts Medal 1979 International Air and Space Hall of Fame inductee 1998 NAS award in aeronautical engineering from the National Academy of Sciences 2000 National Inventors Hall of Fame 2003 Topic references Topic external links Peter Garrison June 2002 The man who could see air Air and Space Smithsonian Volume 17 Number 2 p 68 Retrieved the 15th of December 2014 T. Rees Shapiro, the 16th of October 2009. Richard Whitcomb, 88, dies. Engineer changed the way we fly. The Washington Post obituary. Retrieved the 22nd of May 2010. Whitcomb's first clue. Engineer in charge. NASA History Division. January 1986. NASA People. Aviation pioneer Richard T. Whitcomb. NASA Langley Research Center. The 13th of October 2009. Richard T. Wickham Collection at the WPI Manuscript Collection.